everyone, welcome back to a new YouTube video. If you do not know who I am, hi, hello, my name is Esme IRL. I go by the name of Esme, and this is basically my February wrap up. So, without further ado, let's get right into the video. These are all of the books that I read in the month of February. So, starting off, let me flip them over starting off from the bottom. So the first book that I finished in the month of February was Hunting Adeline. If you guys do not know, Hunting Adeline is basically the sequel to Haunting Adeline, or otherwise known as the Cat and Mouse Duet. It is the second in the duology, and it is way darker than the first book. So if you do not know, this is categorized as a dark romance. I can't really give you much of the gist since it's a sequel of the first book, but just know that it follows around a character called Zade Meadows, and it follows around Adeline. Adeline, who unfortunately something happened to her in the first book that she has to navigate in this book. And honestly, I finished reading this super duper quick on my Kindle, and that is the reason why I was able to finish this, because I love that it's on Kindle Unlimited. But what would I recommend this book? I don't know if I would ever recommend Haunting Adeline. I didn't even pick up Haunting Adeline myself. I was, it was chosen to me from a friend. So I was like, you know what? I'm gonna read it. You know, what's the harm in that? I went in blind. I didn't look at the trigger warning. And so yeah, if I had to, I think I would give this book a four out of five. I'm not, you know, like a 3.5. Cause I'm like, it's not the worst I've ever read, but I don't know if I would recommend it to someone. Like for spice level, it's five out of five. Like it has spice and other things. But yeah, that is the first book that I read in the month of February. The second one I'm actually gonna put together because I wasn't such a great Lauren Asher kick. So I read, I read Terms and Conditions and I read the final offer. So if you guys do not know, this basically follows around the series called the Dreamland Billionaire series. I remember last month, January, I read the fine print or like I finished the fine print. And so I was like, you know what? I'm gonna read Terms and Conditions this month cause why not? And so I finished reading both of these actually on my Kindle, but I did highlight some stuff except for I think the final offer. I didn't highlight anything in there or at least I forgot to tag, but I would wanna say overall my favorite in like raw or in like out of the whole series, it goes like this. So it's the Terms and Conditions the final offer, and then the fine print. I don't know, something about these two specifically, they're my favorite. Like, I can't really, like, pick a favorite one, but if I had to, I think it would be terms and conditions, only because I was giggling my feet in this one, and I finished it, like, two days. So I'm just like, Ee! Like, I was over here in my bed, just, you know, my page out, and then he would say something really, really sweet, and I'm like, Ee! I was just over here giggling and kicking my feet, and I'm like, Ee! Like, I love this book. I would recommend this to so many people now. But if I had to give a rating for both of them for the terms and conditions, it's basically Declan's story with his secretary named Iris, who they have to have an arranged marriage or like a marriage convenience for like about a year. And then she needs to give him a child to basically so that he can get his inheritance and become CEO. This book, it is 4.5 material. It's not five out of five only because it doesn't live in my head rent free like the rest of my books. And I think with spice levels, I want to say it's maybe like a, a solid three out of five because like it has some spice in it, but not a lot of spice to where it's like, like, ooh, why are you, why do you have so many spice? Like you could skip over the pages and still get the gist of it. Now for the final offer, I think I would give it a 4.3 out of five only because this one is a little bit longer than this one. And there was a few times where I was a little bit bored in this one. So this one the fine print took me a little bit more time to get through than terms and conditions but another nevertheless it was actually pretty well as well like i was also kicking my feet so if you guys do not know i kind of want to say it's kind of like ch ex childhood friends to lovers so basically this falls around callahan who is the youngest in the kane brothers so it's declan rowan then kane or callahan sorry i don't know if i using kane but callahan and basically his task for his inheritance is that he has to, he basically has to go to this old lake house in Lake Wisteria, I believe, fix it up, and then sell it by the end of the second year that their grandfather has been dead. But what he doesn't realize is that the grandfather kind of like threw like, like a little bit of like a, it's called like a little twist, that he basically co-owns the house with his old friend who goes by the name of Alana. So Alana has lived in Lake Wisteria for their whole life. She was friends with um, Callahan. They even dated when they were younger, but then, you know, something happens to Callahan and they go their separate ways. So now I want to say they're kind of like disdain to lovers because they're not rivals per se. And for sure, not enemies to lovers. I say enemies to lovers only is in, fan in like fantasy, but they're kind of like disdain to lovers or like they have a, like a, they just, they despise each other. I want to say that, but I really like this. The banter was actually pretty well. So I'd say I would give it like a 4.5 out of five and for spice level this one actually has way less spice 
spice in terms and conditions so maybe it's like a 2.5 out of 5 because like there's still some spice in here it's like not completely free of spice i mean these are adult romance just saying but i would greatly recommend to you guys the dreamland billionaire series trust me you guys will love this series as much as i do now i was in a great lauren asher kick for like a good i don't know like a good solid like two weeks and so i read her newest book or like most recent book that just came out love redesign i believe it came out in november and i read this as well this follows around julian in lake astoria i believe that's where this one is held this is basically her like newest billionaire series who it, which is known as the lake from billionaires and honestly this one i love this one hear me out look to those who love language is a words of affirmation your praise king is safe with me and julian lopez tell me is that not the best thing i've ever read like this book i think i also finished it in like three ish four ish days it follows around julian and dahlia who are also they're also like childhood friends and i believe they went to the same college together but then something happens you know as most things do something happens and so julian has to go back to lake wisteria manage his father's i believe construction company and then him and his brother rowan rafa there we go sorry i think his name is Raphael. which honestly the new her newest book love this book it's love something it's gonna be based around Raphael, and it's pink you already know i pre-ordered that book so well i'm gonna have these two books on my display like they are so cute i love the pastel colors that it has look at this i still have a sticker note because i don't want you know it's been on here so well i barely have nails i want to get the little scraper that takes off the thing but honestly this book i would give it a four out of five stars because i liked it right but the miscommunication trope hi in this damn book the one trope i despise is the miscommunication trope because i'm like if you guys would just talk if you guys would just flip and talk please this, this could have all been communicated way earlier but basically julian it runs a construction company dahlia runs a i believe she's like kind of like a house interior she has like her own show she's famous so like they're both wealthy but like julian's more wealthy than her she's more famous but he's more rich and so basically they team up to fix up this house and that they're gonna sell it and then you know along the way feelings get caught miscommunication finally unravels and you know why some spice happens in this book so yeah this book i would give it a four out of five stars with a like a three out of five in spice because it does have some spice in it so if this is your jam and then keeping up with like kind of like the spice theme this is my second to last book that i read in the month of february i read hooked by emily mcintyre because i was after reading so much like straight fluffy romances i was like i wasn't in the mood for fantasy but i was like i'm gonna dip my toes into the dark romance again and so i looked because i have hooked prof and scarred i was like hmm. i just literally i just closed my eyes picked one and i got hooked if you do not know hooked is kind of like a, um i don't know if they're interconnected but it's kind of like a fairy tale retelling this follows around peter pan and captain hook but you know we don't fall in love with peter pan we fall in love with the villain who in this case is james barnes james barnes barnes is like kind of like like the villain in the story kind of like the i I want to say he's kind of like a mafia leader and then bring in wendy darling who wendy darling is actually peter pan's daughter which i feel like is a great twist of fate and then you know something happens and then wendy and peter they get together i'm like Ooh. I'm not gonna lie, this book really made me hate Peter Pan. Because, like, I've seen Peter Pan IRL, and, like, not gonna lie to you guys, not my favorite movie. Like, not the worst out of all of the movies I've seen, but, like, this book really solidified my hatred for Peter Pan. I think it's just, like, how they've written it, but I really love James Barnes in here. Like, it made me actually be like, ooh, you know, villains are actually kind of cooler than heroes. Because this is the line that I stand for, right? The hero will sacrifice their love to save the rest of the world, but the villain will sacrifice the world to save his love. Which, honestly, I feel like is way more romantic, because, like, if you sacrifice me, for the world i'm gonna haunt your ass but then i'd also feel bad if you sacrifice the world for me so it's like it goes both ways but this book i would give it like a four out of five because i really did like it and i did finish it this one i think i finished in like four days if i remember i can't remember specifically how many days it took me it took me a few days though i will say because like i do work like a part-time job so it's like i can't always be reading although i wish i was but this has a lot a lot of spice so i give this one a four out of five in the spice meter so if you know if you want a dark romance based on peter pan but where you fall in love with captain hook and you have a lot of spice this is the book for you lastly the book that i read in the month of february was bride by ali hazelwood so if you do not know this was actually part of my book club in my discord and in my um my friend caliente's discord and we were both reading the book of bride and honestly 
honestly, I love this book so much. I love this book so much because it's basically Ali Hazelwood's, um, her debut book. And I want to say this is technically kind of like the first book that I read of Ali Hazelwood. Because I read Love on the Brain. She's not my favorite, we'll say this. I unfortunately DNF'd the book, not my favorite. But I am, I did give her book another try. So I have, I believe I have like most of her books, but... I really love Bride. I'm not gonna lie to you guys, growing up on Wattpad, I kind of understood all the mating, you know, the nodding, the, oh my god, she's, she's gonna she's gonna love you for the rest of my life, like, I'm not gonna lie. Understood what nodding meant because of Wattpad and manga, we'll just say that. But I did enjoy this book, I gave this book a 4.5 out of 5, only because, you know, she doesn't live in my rent, brain rent free, I'm like, I vibed with her, but like, not that much vibe with it but i did love the plot twist that it came, that includes um i did like how she spelled vampire with a y and honestly i ate this book right up i bought this i believe saturday i finished it on tuesday like it was it was quick like i finished this book super duper fast and i would greatly recommend you guys read this book if you guys want to like if you don't want to like read akatar or like what's it called like shatter me slash fourth wing to be like your first fantasy book this is kind of like um another dipping your toes into fantasy because it has romance in it but it's also still a little bit of like mystical the um mystical fantasy because it deals with werewolves and vampires and humans it has like a lot of i don't know if it has magic but like it has like the mystical themes to it so i would greatly recommend to you guys recommend this book to you guys and surprisingly this only has i don't know how many but it has very little smut scenes which honestly after reading all those smut books that i had i was kind of enjoying this one i was like i'm tired i don't want to read more smut books please like yeah these are all of the books that i read in the month of february and honestly i kind of i feel like i had a great stack it's like i realized i can read maybe six books in a month like i wish i was that person who could read 12 books in a month but i feel like you need a lot of free time for that and which i unfortunately do not have a lot of free time so when i can i i mostly read at night like right now right after this i'm gonna go finish aqua war because i have a court of silver flames as part of one of my um tbrs and so i need to finish that book but if you have read any of these books i would greatly appreciate it if you guys would comment down below you know what are your thoughts on it have you read bride did you enjoy it as well as i did and what video do you guys want to see next comment down below the the vampire emoji i, I, I kind of want to see that one and i really hope you guys enjoyed please like and subscribe if you love my channel and you know if you want to join along my book journey with me but yeah this is me esme and you guys are the besties this is me signing off bye besties